So uh, I'm about to open the meeting. Uh, when we start the hearing, I'll ask you. We've got four, and I'll ask you if you consent to go forward with. Uh, um, we've got a quorum, but not our full five members uh, here tonight. So that's all. Um, it is 6:09 on July 2nd. 2019. My name is Charles Putnam. I'm the chair of the Zoning Board of Adjustment of Rollinsford, uh, and I call our uh, meeting to order. Uh, the first item of business is roll call by the recording secretary. Um, so we have uh, Charles Putnam, who's the chair, Andrea Cass, John Hinsman, who are full members, and Paul Casiel, who is an alternate. Um, the List of the abutters provided by the applicant were duly noticed, and notice was put into Foster's Daily Democrat, and as well as around town to the locations. Okay. Do you want to? And also, there were notices sent to abutters. Yeah. Oh, applicants were duly noticed. Okay. Um, and I note that there are four members of the board here tonight, and um, under our procedural rules, the applicant has the option, we have a hearing scheduled for um, the Lorax Sustainable Development LLC. Uh, it's your hearing. Um, our rules normally require us to have five here. Um, we have a quorum rule of three, so we have a quorum. Um, and it's your choice whether to proceed with less than five members. And what you're giving up is that um, you can still ask for a rehearing if you uh, should this fail. Um, but the lack of a well, the lack of a five member board would not be grounds. So that's what we would be waiting. Uh, understood. We'd like to proceed forward. You'd like to proceed. All right. Uh, so uh, what we will do is we will begin uh, the public hearing, and um, the recording secretary has already reported on the first case in terms of the notice provided to um, members of the public and abutters. Um, and the first item is to allow the applicant to uh, make its presentation. Members of the board may uh, ask you questions as you go along, but we'll try to let you build up ahead of steam. Great. Thank you. My, my name is Bob Stowell. I am principal of Tri-Tech Engineering in Dover. And this is Michael Gribble. He is owner of Lorax Sustainable Development, the, uh, the present owners of, of the property. This is project that we were working on with, with, with Mike a few months and we went to uh, the, the planning board a couple of months back on a conceptual basis to get uh, our plan out there to get some feedback and, and uh, it was fairly, fairly well received at the time. But if, if I could, I'd, I'd kind of like to go over a little bit of the, the, the overall project information as far as where, where we're heading with this. And, Proposing this, this is the the pre property previous uh, previously owned by Dr. Bennett. This is a large Victorian home that he, that he, he resided in, a carriage house that he was in the process of rehabbing, and a large uh, doesn't show up there great, but a large car barn that he built to uh, house his, his classic car collection. It's a uh, 10,000 square foot footprint that varies between three and five stories. It's a monster of a structure. So what, what this proposal is looking at doing is, is property is almost 11 acres of land, and we are proposing a, a seven lot, uh, seven building lots, seven house lots, uh, open space conservation subdivision, where we are providing uh, the existing house that would be on a lot, the, the finished rehabbing the carriage house that would be on its own lot, and then we've got five individual building lots, one, one here, uh, and then two, three, four, five building lots. We've got a, a big expanse of open space uh, that goes along along the river, uh, and a, another, another big open space down here at the at the roadway. So that that that's the general concept of what we're trying to do. Mike Mike acquired the property. Uh, he he is going to reside in the house, but also is a builder by trade, and would, would like to, to to build on the property. So. Uh, when Mike came to us, it was a matter of um, 
how, how can we do a development that I, that I want to live in? And, and uh, clearly the, the house is an outstanding uh, piece of architecture and, and Mike just wants to be a, a good resident there. So what we've tried to do is look at, again, the open space subdivision regulations. What that, that allows us to do the, is to look more at where we want to build, where the, the building sites, and, and less about furniture and areas and, and, and things like that. The open space allows us to do things like leave this, this big open space in the front here so that, that when you go by the project or you come into the project, this is the, the, the view that you get, which is the view that's here currently. It's a, it's a, a big field in the front. You've got two, two nice structures that are there. And the, the proposed development is either tucked over to this side of the project or this one is down, down that's not visible from the roadway. Um, what I've got here is I can pass a couple of these out. So a couple of copies of that. And, and the first, first page is, is a picture of, of a car barn that you get, you get this, this long face of it along here when you come in the driveway press it on. It's a, it's a pretty monster structure there. But then the, the second photo is, is, is oops, this, this, this guy here, which is the, the next picture that is, uh, as you go down around the back of the car barn, that was his, his, his drive in the garage concept where he's got these overhead doors uh, and, and you came around and, and pulled in under it with all of his vehicles. But at, at, at that point, that's a pretty, a pretty significant structure. And that, and then again, that sits. This, that's this space here that you, that's what you see when you look at that end of the building, right, right there. So that, that's what we started with when, when Mike came and said, you know, this is, this is not what I want to do with the property. This is a, a structure from the previous owner. What can we, what can we do? So. That, as you get out in the package, the next thing we went to is, all right, this is what we want. What do we want? And this, this is the view that he wants when we finish, which is either the next photo or there's a few, a few of them that are fairly similar, that as you come in the road here on, on Scarlet Lane, you're going to be looking right down at these two structures as you would presently as you come in the driveway. And this is the, the open space that will be in, in front of the in front of the property. So this is this is uh, uh, again I think open space subdivision and one of the uh, great parts of that is to preserve the view scapes to the big open space along the river that put an environmental open space. We've got this here that's a view a view shed uh, streetscape view, open space. So I think I think what we're doing really fits in with the audience and it's great that you guys have uh, that, that flexibility in, in, in town to approach it with one of these subdivisions, types of subdivisions. So that, that's where we started. We started we started working with you know, how to lay things out and the fact is that the barn was going to get torn down. And Mike can probably talk about this a little bit as well. But as we presented to the planning board, once you get into the process of inquiring about demolition of this, this barn, is, is that actually the barn is made up of several historic barns within the barn. It's uh, uh, their antique timber type barns that are put together. And this miserable looking shell put over the outside of it. But there's actually four separate historic barns that, are, that make this up. And we brought, uh, again, a little brochure from the, the company that Mike is working with that's going to do the barn restoration work with them. We hired a company out of Berwick called Preservation Timber Frame, and he came in to give me some advice, and he kept saying, wow, you have no idea about the vinyl side and the quality of the barns that are in there. So the, the second sheet that you have there, I think, is the most descriptive. That shows, just based on roof line, there's, there's three barns that jump out at your right, right, right away here. The, this, end, this end here, there's a, there's a main structure in here that is made up of this timber fret, timber type structure. And then you did, did little shed doors and et cetera, et cetera to get the square footage up. But these are three uh, individual fully intact, fully 
intact. They were dismantled somewhere and numbered and, and trucked here, put together piece by piece. And, and uh, once you get in there, you really realize what, what uh, a beautiful find it is. So the layout that we have is uh, that here. Those four, four structures that are within there, uh, we're showing two of them here that would be, again, re repurposed and put on the site and turned into, instead of barns, they would, they would be timber, timber, timber frame uh, homes. So that, that is, that is the, the, the concept here, is to, to, uh, to reuse the barn that, that, that's there in a, a very unique way and keep it on site. And uh, uh, it's kind of a, it's a, as Mike says, the, the wow factor. Uh, it's, kind of, it's kind of a neat project. It's not a, it's not a cookie cutter by any means. The, the property isn't. The property is a very special property. And, and I think what Mike intends to do is a very, very neat. So that's where we're at with, with uh, as far as the overall project goes, where, where it brings us to the Zoning Board of Adjustment is what we have labeled on here as Lot 4 and Lot 5, where we would like to, uh, and I think the other side of this shows it better, is we would like to lead to the 250-foot setback to the river. That uh, this, is, this is the barn. This is a driveway that he's instructed to come in around under here that's, that's a combination of concrete pavement in here and a gravel drive that comes around. So this, this is, these, these are a couple of natural building site locations, but we're, we're within the 250 foot setback. So we're looking for a lead in that. We're looking for to build within up to 175 feet from the river within very stringent guidelines. One, that it would be on only lots four and five, and it would be limited to uh, that 175-foot setback instead of 250-foot setback. And the amount of structure that would go in here wouldn't exceed the, the amount of structure that's already within that 250-foot setback. Now. That, that we, have, we have a barn here that's going to be taken out of that 250-foot setback and relocated on the property to an area that meets the setback. And then we have a big, a big chunk of the building where the 250-foot setback comes through there. So we've got a big chunk of this, including that, that big five-story uh, front that, that is there, is, is already located within the 250-foot setback. So we're basically asking for a swap of building footprint from presently uh, as it's configured in, a, in an area here, an area here, that we want to configure in an area here and an area here. And again, as you can see by uh, this picture here, this is the left side of that where uh, we're proposing to, to site a structure that once the barn comes out, this is uh, like a, like a, 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 a again, hole that, that was created uh, Again, to get, to get this drive around construction, uh, constructed to get in under the building. So we've got a lot of earthwork to do in there, and we think that, uh, again, that it, that we, it would be an even, even swap on, on square footage in an area that, again, we focused on leaving this as it is. This here side over here, in order to, 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 to rebuild the barn, as, as Mike has proposed, this whole side gets blown up over here anyways. Uh, so this is where we're, we're focusing the work. But we've got a couple of very, very nice building sites. Uh, but we do not need your, your 250-foot setback. So that, that's, that's the gist of what, what uh, we're asking for. We've, we've submitted with our application an outline of, of uh, how we feel we need the uh, criteria in order to receive the variance from you. The, uh, I don't know if you want us to go through that, but I think that the, the things that um, we tried to stress in putting the application together is, is the fact that this isn't, isn't virgin property. It, it's, it's a redevelopment site. This is the, a lot of the things that, um, as we have a 250-foot setback to the river, that uh, uh, the 
focus of that is because always the environmental concerns are getting close to the river and the, the damage has already been done here with, with, with this current development. Um, so in going in and reworking the land to get to get the barn reconfigured in, in the manner that we've asked it to, um, we think that this would be consistent with, with the, the ordinance and we wouldn't be creating any, any uh, additional uh, development within that area that's not already hasn't already taken place and and uh, again the environmental concerns we think that uh, uh, again the, the, the buildings broken up into a couple of different structures like that as opposed to one large uh, building it's, uh, the, the roof on off is a lot easier to uh, be absorbed by the ground as opposed to the, right now that's a lot of water that comes off of that one building it doesn't get the, the proper treatment it, it should before it gets to the river, whereas as uh, smaller chunks of development would, would more likely get the proper treatment before it gets to the river. As part of the subdivision process, we've got the roadway drainage that we need to deal with. That we've, we've proposed a couple of bio retention areas that will handle all the, the runoff from the roadways and the roadway areas that will be built and take care of all appropriate treatment there. And beyond that, uh, exclusive of the roadway, we're actually ending up with less impervious on site uh, than, than presently. The fact that that big building and all the travelways associated with that, the gravel, the pavement, the concrete that goes along with that would be coming out. We actually have a net, net loss uh, of, of impervious exclusive of, of the, the roadway, of course. Um, I think, uh, again, the things that jump out at me on, on the application, again, contrary to the uh, public interest, I, I think as far as the public interest goes, we are, uh, again, the 250 foot setback to be an environmental concern, but I think that what we're doing is improvement over current conditions. So I, I think we're certainly uh, uh, not contrary to public interest. We, uh, uh, consistent with the spirit of the ordinance, again, I think it falls into that, that same category of, of uh, from an environmental standpoint, what we're doing is it's going to be an improvement there. We're, we're, we're less impervious, we're, we're better, better uh, treatment of the water before it gets down, down to the river. Um, substantial justice, again, I think the, the fact that we would be taking this. this monster structure out of the neighborhood and, and creating a real neighborhood, I, I think is, is definitely the, um, the right approach to a project like this. And I think that the, uh, that along with the property value uh, issue, that, that certainly uh, getting homes in there as opposed to a, a big uh, uh, 20,000 square foot building or, or even more, but I think that the, uh, the neighborhood value should be much improved by of, uh, one, the structure being done, but also the, the concern of what might go on in the structure in the future. As far as um, the, the unnecessary hardship issues, I, I think that, again, I, I don't think we would be here making this case if, it, if, if this was a fully wooded site. I think that the fact that, that it was previously developed, that uh, there needs to be significant work done to, to the site to make it to make it function as it should under the current zoning, uh, being the urban residential. Uh, I think this overall would be, be an improvement. As far as how it distinguishes from, from from other properties in the area, um, I think one of the things that attracted Mike to the property is in addition to the house is. The, the extensive river frontage. It's got over a thousand feet of river frontage along the same falls. Uh, but then all of a sudden, when you apply a 50 foot setback to that beautiful river, river frontage, we have 54% uh, of the property is, is restricted from, from building. Uh, that, that, that strip of 250 along the river that takes out, that takes out over half of the property there. And I think that, that's a definitely unique, unique situation. That's 
So, as your application is worded, um, wouldn't it apply to, um, in other words, it's, this, it's not divided into separate lots right now, it's just one, 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 one parcel. Wouldn't the um, way your application is worded, you'd be uh, granted relief for the entire property, um, allowing construction up close to the 175 feet? That, that's certainly not our, our, our intent. Um, I'm, not, I'm not saying that it is, but I'm just saying the way the, way the application is granted. Well, we, we specifically limit to, it, it's tied to this plan, which, which ties to, to lot, to lot uh, four and five here. So there, there is specific boundary lines here for lots four and five that uh, I, I think it does. We've also said we can't exceed putting in what we've taken out. So there's a limit to, it actually equals out about exact as okay. it is, so that would be a second fail seat. Now, did Dr. Bennett ever get a, uh, was he here granted a variance for encroaching on the, no idea. Okay. No. The, the grading that he did in there is severe. I, I find it almost dangerous, and I, I don't, I can't believe someone coming out of it the way it is, but maybe, I mean, it's a huge structure, I don't know how he snuck it in. I'm not sure how long it's been there. Uh, the fire someone said. Could you, um, so in terms of the, the 175 feet, um, so are you saying that that is, uh, do you show on, 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 the, on the diagrams there where the 175 feet mark is? That, that brings us up to, to this house here. The right, the right back line of the lot of the house, or yes, that would be the, that would be the can't go any further back. Couldn't couldn't get any closer than that. So that would come along and and be further. As it's drawn, we use the 175. That what we were trying to do was again, this is an area that that has been excavated, and I think you can see the the abandoned car that's in the pile there. An area that needs to be re regraded, reworked. That it, it's a it's a beautiful house site there. We, we, sure. we, work, we worked around the house site and, and built a lot and the setback around it. Couldn't you, how, how long were the driveways into the houses? How many feet of the, for instance, on lot four, how long is that driveway? Is that you know this is a property that 
community benefits from in terms of the viewship from the river. Mm -hmm. so, so this is the existing tree line here. Mm -hmm. So, so these, these two lot, lots don't require and any tree removal to... No, I hear you. Okay, I hear you. Yeah. So certainly th these are, again, things that we tried to think through to see how, how we could work again. Uh, the certain, certainly uh, benefit to the uh, from property with certain burdens that come with it and trying to mesh the, mesh the two together. Okay. Thank you. I don't think I have any further questions right now. Mr. Castle? Yes. I have several. In the application submitted, it states that, that the redevelopment includes subdividing the property into seven open space plus the lots. Uh, did, did you use the density formula calculations and open space calculations per 8.7 of, of ordinance? We, we did. Okay, I didn't see them in, in the application. So, no, that, that was part, part of our submittal to the planning board. Okay, and of, did, did it meet it? it oh, yes, okay. that's, how, that's how we determined what we wanted to, to do. Okay. We haven't been to the, it hasn't been vetted by the planning board yet. That we can't go there until we stop and see. If this is that far away. Yeah, but this is in the zoning ordinance. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. No, it, it, it complies. With it. If it doesn't comply, then, okay. then we're... It does comply. It does comply, absolutely. We have yeah. seven point something homes total, and we have the calculations okay. here. Yeah, so as part of our submittal to the planning board, we have the calculations that start with our, our, uh, our total area of, of uh, 10.722 acres. We have wetlands on the property of, of 0 0.064. We have steep slopes of, of 2.487 acres. Uh, we deducted a 10% of the overall area, or, or 46,086 square feet for, uh, road, for, the, for the roadway. Uh, that gets us down to a, a net area of uh, uh, 309,000 square feet, divided by the minimum lot size of 43,560, uh, that gives us a yield of, of 7.1 lots. Okay. Good. And the current property has 10.7 acres with one house, That's associated correct. carriage house, yes. a 22,914 square foot car barn, and a 570 foot square foot barn. The car barn will be removed. Yep and will be replaced with three residential lots because the car barn is, is on lots four, five, oh, excuse me, five, six, and seven. That is correct. So you're basically removing a car barn to make three, three lots. Correct. Okay. okay. Is there any other reason that you're, that's, that you're removing the barn? Uh, you know, I know that you're going to, you, know, you know, reuse the timber. Is there any no, it, 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 uh, when, when my, my, my first first interest was in the home there, and, and like I said, he's, he's, a, he's a builder by trade, um, but I, I, I think that would, I know that talking with, with uh, the uh, uh, planning consultant, John Krebs, is, is that a lot of people have approached him over the years on a reuse of reuse of Yeah, yeah but I'm and, and that, talking that, about zoning. So it's, it's in the residential zone, which actually can be up to four units per acre if it had sewer. So it's actually getting high. It, it doesn't have sewer. There's it does not have sewer. Um, but basically, that barn feels commercial. I think the neighbors will tell you, and when you stand there, especially that view he shows you where it's five stories high, it's in a huge hole, and I'm, tr I'm trying to think of a practical use for it. And unless you're an eccentric car collector, it's tough. Everyone says if you if you could separate really what we're doing is separating four very high end early 1800s barns that were this guy has a taste for the unicorns the special and these barns are special so really what we're doing is taking four things that are stuck together into this obnoxious I think 22,000 square feet wasn't counting some of the stories it's bigger than that and making it something that fits the neighborhood it's a residential neighborhood. Yep. Other people who have looked at this property have done wedding venues, and there's been commercial thoughts, condominiums, apartment rentals, because how do you use such a uniquely huge item? And I think we found it. Yeah. Leave it where it is, spread it out, knock yeah. it down, and grant it, fill in these big holes. And you're also creating three, 
Three four. Yeah. There's four. There'll be four right across that whole back. There'll be okay. one, two, three, four of that barn. Okay, but then the other barn will be removed also no. and replaced oh. with one residential lot. So the, you see on the, the back of lot, barn. see the back of lot four, there's a small barn that's very close. That's that's within probably 100 feet of the water, maybe. Yes, and that's... that's I'm going to take that off and make a garage out of it for the main house. Okay, yep. But yeah, the fine. carriage house itself is stunning. Okay, answer my question. Uh, so, sort of removal of the bonds will will also comply with uh, zoning 5.4.1 uh, of the zoning ordinance, which states that no action shall be permitted to change the boundary of a lot unless it brings a lot closer to conforming to the requirements of of the ordinance and makes no other aspect of the water structures on a lot more, more conform. So when you remove the two bonds. Well, you're starting with a legal blank slate, a property that you can you, you can develop. Right? Correct. We're we're okay. moving the barns. Correct. Yeah. So and we want. So the new development will consist of 10.7 acres with six building lots, a lot with an existing house and carriage house, and one open space lot. A road with the cul-de-sac can be used to access the properties and. Maximize the development because the ordinance states that if you have a cul de sac, you don't, you need less frontage. So, right. and, and you're complying with that. And the ordinance is pretty, pretty liberal, right? We had drawn a hammerhead, and I think the planning board steered us back for fire purposes to yeah. the cul de sac. Okay. So, as part of the subdivision, two houses will be built on subdividing lots that do not meet the 250-foot Salmon Falls River setback. Both houses are 175 feet from the Salmon Falls River and 75 feet into the buffer. And the elevation map which I saw that was submitted indicates that the entire parcel slopes 50 feet t towards the river. So there's possible stone storm water issues with you know with the entire development. So have this you know this is like the Chester Run Gun Club that you stated in the uh, well the Supreme Court case that you referenced in, in the application. But the applicant's wetlands consultant had testified that the product will not injure the wetlands in light of the in, in light of the closed drainage system, the tension ponds, and open drainage system. So what are you doing to protect the Salmon Falls River from, from pollution or, or impairments? So what, what we're doing is, is within the, the center of the cul-de-sac here, and in an area um, on the edge of the open space here, we're collecting all the water from the, the new construction of the roadway and we've got two, two bioretention areas that will properly treat, infiltrate uh, in, back into the groundwater, clean runoff. This, this section over here, what we're, what we're proposing is a net decrease in impervious, uh, which, which not only is it a net decrease, but, but just the fact that it'll be broken up into four separate houses uh, is going to be much more advantageous from a runoff standpoint than this as a collective whole. Finally, again, part of the siting of the homes here, this is, this is the start of the bank here. Uh, and we're not proposing to get into the steep bank down to the river. We're, we're not disturbing any, any of the steep slopes on the property. We've identified the steep slopes, anything over greater, greater than 25%. We're not proposing to disturb any, any of those that we would cause future erosion. So we're proposing this, this area here that's already been disturbed, already flattened out here to, to, to keep the, it there. And again, this over here is, is this, this uh, uh, showed in the stockade fence here um, that, is, that is, again, I love the fact that we get to deal with this hole that he's dug. The natural grade down to the river doesn't start until the other side of this, this fence here. So our construction is going to be well back from the top of slope slope there as well. I don't I don't see that in in the elevation map, but what looks like it slopes that the entire lot 
slopes towards the river. It, it, it slopes towards the river, but but only only when you get to here does it does it step, uh, slope steeply. This here is a is a normal a normal pitch. You draw uh, from the roadway down that 150 foot driveway. We drop two, four, six, maybe seven feet um, over that 150 foot driveway. So it's like a that's like a three and a half percent driveway. That's that's really flat. I don't know, really flat, pretty flat. And so again, I have to ask you. Uh, is this something that that you can show to the to the board s saying that you did all these calculations, various services, I uh, did all all the stormwater studies and and the Salmon Falls River will not be impaired. Because okay, the reason I'm really particular on this is uh uh, the two, 250 foot setback is not um, arbitrary. This was actually, uh, you know, it's referenced in the Zodan Ordinance. And it's also referenced on pages three and four of the Rollinsford Stormwater Regulations that, that the Planning Board uses. Also, uh, you know, uh, uh, the new development is in the uh, Rollinsford MS4 area and it must follow the 2017 New Hampshire Small MS4 General Permit. And in section 2.3.6, stormwater management and new, new development and re, re, you know, you know, redevelopment, well it basically says that the Rollinsford Storm regular, regulations were, were implemented under the requirements of the 2003 MS4 uh, permit, which is an EPA per permit. Exactly. So, so, so I I am and and on top of that, the Salmon Falls River is is a unique resource, uh, which is part of the Great Bay watershed. So it's important tonight that you know that you show us that that the river will not be be impaired because it will. Uh, affect the uh, public health and well well being like like you know the several water bodies that has has impairments and, and, and it creates uh, algae blooms. We we just had one on Woolen Pond and that's basically caused by overdevelopment. So I I am concerned tonight that that this will create a over development because it's more than just two houses being 175 feet away. You are taking a current use, which is one house, you know, with some bonds. You know, someone bought, you know, 10.7 uh, acres, and then he created a basically a huge car bond. But now, all at once, you can have several houses. And it's going to have septic tanks. People's going to be washing their cars in a driveway. They'll be fertilizing lawns, washing their houses with uh, chemicals, and the list goes on and on and on. And they're going to also have um, discharge from from their roofs, and uh, you know they might have uh, some pumps uh, right in their basement. So there will be a. This is a more intense use for for the property. So, have you done your study that you, you can present to us tonight and say, uh, the Salmon Falls River will not be be, be impaired from from this development? I, I did not come prepared to make that kind of case this evening. We did we did submit that report to the to the planning board um, that that, out, that follows the guidelines of your stormwater regulations in the MS4 community has been submitted to the planning board. I did not anticipate discussing that this evening. I did not bring that with me this evening, but we, we did submit a detailed study of uh, all the drainage conditions on the property. The, the uh, uh, from an environmental standpoint, I have I have no no doubt that that this will be. 
improvement to the conditions of the Sand Falls River over what's there. Uh, but if we've got a couple of cars getting washed by a homeowner versus, versus the 60 or 70 cars that he, he had in that building, um, I'm certain that this is going to be improving over, over the fact that uh, it's been an odd use there over the years, but, but the fact is that this, this is what's supposed to go on on, on the property. He, he was the oddball. We're getting rid of the oddball. We'll bring him in the, 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 uh, how, how this property is, is supposed to be developed. That, 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 uh, again, roof, roof runoff is, is clean runoff. Uh, you have very minimal driveways uh, in, in here. There are going to be some pumps, but again, some pumps are, are clean groundwater. We don't have, we're not looking at uh, yeah, but unfortunately, some, some pumps is classified by, by the EPA as illicit discharge, unfortunately. Some pumps from a full basement, if it's a crawl space, so, you know, the, you know, the, these are EPA rules, so, and so it goes beyond the town or, or the state, unfortunately. I'm about to drive on this, too. <coughs> All set? Other questions? Yes, and so the answer is no. You, uh, you do not have a study that you can present to us tonight that says that that I did this study with with the new development and it will not pollute the salmon's fall through. I think the main crux of our argument is that it's obviously a lot less. It, it's taking something that is, is is less roof space and it's more spread out and it's residential rather than commercial in nature. It's not all happening in one area. So it, any logic would say that if you took that much roof and took four pieces out and spread them out, um, and, and the ones that are not, the reason they have the 250 foot setback is because the other things you mentioned with septics and sump pumps and whatnot have that 250. So really it is these two houses. The, the rest are so far back that they don't, according to the state in, in your own rules, don't have, have any restrictions. These two being at 175 or, or, or 200 feet rather than the 250 are specifically because there are areas that have been annihilated and, and look like big craters there and, and really should be fixed. And the only way to justify filling in that barn and filling in these holes is if you're creating something different than what's there. Anybody that looks at, at, at the existing structure and have the exact same amount of coverage inside that, that setback that we're talking about, but, but minimized down, spread out, and taken care of by homeowners and landscaping and, and covenants that will say the restrictions, there are restrictions on, on pesticides and whatnot within that 250, and that will be in these people's deeds. And, and for the, the entire conservation land, it is going to have those rules incorporated into the, it's going to be commonly owned. Okay, so that's, so you have conservation land and that wasn't talked about, so that's why I'm trying to bring that. ask these questions to you. And I'm not, so that whole back piece and the whole front piece, what we're trying to do is keep the land the way it is. When you drive by it, you'll see this beautiful field with these beautiful trees. We leave in that as conservation. That's going to be shared by the homeowners in the subdivision and all the water frontage. And it's going to be protected. There's going to be rules that say, this is how you groom wetlands, this is what you do, this is what you don't do, this is how it is at 50 feet. One of my specialties is sensitive land. And the reason I spoke up on top of Bob is that I'm proud of the fact that I take something that could have been condominiums or a wedding venue. And what I'm doing instead is there's going to be seven like-minded people who care about uh, uh, fossil fuels and emissions and care about the environment. And I'm going to, by deed, perpetually, forever, deed that land is non-buildable and with a list of rules that, that are regulated. There's very, it would be a tough argument to say that this isn't better for the Salmon Falls River than, than leaving it like it is. It's really not, a tough one. Okay, I guess I'm not getting at better because you're starting, you're going to we're, we're not take, so, you're, you're you're gonna take it out of the problem. If you have a question, why don't you ask a question? This, it, okay. Rather than debating yep. with the applicant, um, go ahead and ask a question because I know we have a butters present that may also want to yes. um, ask some questions. I know I have some questions. I'll come down, Charlie. Okay. Just, just to clarify, 
that this is all open space across here. Uh, that's over four acres of open space, and no, there isn't any lot that owns any water on the same falls. So there, none of them have river frontage that would have access to, to alter the, the river frontage. And then we have another open acre of open space up front there. Excellent. Um, I have a couple of questions, if I could. Um, the auxiliary barn. So uh, I think your petition refers to the car barn, which is, I think, towards the front of the parcel, yeah. towards Silver Street. And then the auxiliary barn. Do you know when that was built? It, it's very old. It's old? Very, very, very old. Okay. They think in 1850s. The house is 1851. The carriage house falls right in line, and that that barn does appear to be an exact same, according to the preservation company we bought out there. Okay. Um, thank you. And the, um, so that obviously didn't need a variance. Pre it predates zoning. <laughs> predates the zoning board. Um, and in, as we get to the discussion about hardship, um, part of what I think we're going to be talking about is the relationship between the general purposes of the 250 foot setback. Uh, and so let me see if there's common ground on some of this. So um, I think Mr. Casal has done an excellent job identifying the stormwater protection aspect of the setback. But I think we could probably also agree that it's to protect soils, to protect vegetation, to protect wildlife habitat. Um, water quality, I guess, would be the, the, the stormwater thing. Um, so those are the general purposes. We, we would agree. Okay. That, that, that's, as I started off this evening, I don't, I don't think we would be here if this was a fully weighted piece of property. But, but this is, this is, uh, Again, the existing tree line that's out on the property now uh, is, is configured something like that. Uh, these two lots here don't require any tree cutting. Uh, we, we put the roadway in working around the trees within within uh, the property. Uh, so we've got, again, I think from sensitivity from a vegetation standpoint and any wildlife corridors that there may be along the river, I think we're, we're sensitive to that. Uh, we, we've stayed away from the steep slopes. Again, that could be a soil erosion concern. We're not proposing any work within the, the steep slopes. Um, the the uh, septic systems obviously will have to go through the, the normal review process. So, um, I guess I'll, I'll preface, if I if I may, my, my next couple of questions, which are going to go to hardship. I appreciate the time and attention and your your willingness to engage with us uh, in in discussing the parcel and all the steps that you're taking to try to protect the parcel. But I'm really struggling with this concept of hardship um, because, and I apologize for being crass, but to me it seems like we're talking about the general purposes of the setback, which I think we agree are pretty substantial, with the difference between getting five or seven or four or seven um, parcels in the cluster subdivision. In other words, that we're talking about maximizing economic benefit, trading off against the the the, uh, the the general purposes of the setback. And for me, that doesn't meet hardship. That and so, give me your best explanation why it does meet hardship. Um, and I'm happy to entertain it. I haven't. Yeah, uh, I, I would I would I would start off with a different premise from the beginning. Is, is is what we've gone through is we've identified through the, the calculations in the zoning ordinance what what the town has said was the appropriate number of lots on, on given all the constraints of this property, steep slopes, wetlands, uh, the size of the lot, et cetera. And, and we've come up with a number of 7.1. Mm -hmm. So we're, we're looking for seven places that are appropriate to, to the, our good building sites to make a good a good neighborhood, a good successful project. I think Mike is working very hard from the standpoint of, of the, the timber frame iron concept. And so we, we've got we've got seven lots. We're, we're trying to figure out where to put them. Yeah, but I guess that, that leads me to my next question, Mr. Stoll, which is there are dozens if not hundreds of landowners in the town of Rollinsford who have steep slopes or wetland setbacks or in this instance um, uh, Salmon Falls River Reeves setback issues and it, it, the ordinance is set up to 
you basically have to discount those setbacks from determining your buildable, economically um, maximizable interests in the parcel. And if we grant this variance, how in the world do we explain that all of those dozens and hundreds of other landowners who will also come in and tell us, well, I could get I could get another house lot if you let me build within 150 feet of the, of the river, or I could get another two house lots if you if you didn't um, require me to have the steep slopes um, exemption. So I, I just worry that that if we find that this is a hardship, we open the doors wide open to basically guttering our our our, our river setbacks, our steep slope setbacks, all of the things that do. Um, constrain landowners in our I, I would, I would uh, respectfully say that I, I would expect that there are very few uh, parcels in town that are over 50% of the property is, is unbuildable due to a single regulation. I, I, would, I, would, I would find that, that amazing. Uh, I, I, again, what we're doing is, is trying to figure out where we're to place these structures. That's what that's what that's what we're doing. Right. So so does, does does this guy go back and, and sit back here? He can. But the, there's there's a big hole there with a building in it already that would we, we would rather be here. And we're explaining to you why we'd rather be there. Why why it's not contrary to the spirit of the ordinance because because the damage has already been done by the previous development. The, this lot here. We've got, we've got a beautiful field here that, that has a great view, viewscape in keeping with the open space ordinances. Do we, do, do we want to stick a road furniture house over there on Silver Street? We're, this is the plan that we develop and the rationale that we develop based on the fact that this, and if you look at um, the gravel access roads that have been built here, what we're doing is, is, is an improvement on the environmental concerns of stormwater runoff, wildlife corridor, ballistic. Each property should be looked at uniquely. I don't think that there's any precedent setting where all of a sudden you change setbacks. This is a unique property with unique restrictions that's been uniquely abused. And if someone came to you with the same criteria and said, if we were able to stretch this a little bit, we could make something really beautiful, to lose that field in the front because of a hole that's already been done, it, I think it says, um, how does it use the word, is, is um, um, sub, uh, I forget you used the word to me earlier, but justified. Um, un, un, again, the, hard, un, the hardship issue, I think, is an unnecessary. Un right, the, word, the way you word it is an unnecessary hardship. Is it necessary if I come in and I want to put a house in a setback? Of course you shouldn't. But in this instance, when there's already one there, are you creating an unnecessary hardship? Because you're saying, Mike, the land you bought has a five-story barn and a hole in the setback. You want to spread it out and pull it in and clean it up. But even though we don't think it hurts the neighbors, we, don't, we think it does fit the character of the zone, we understand that you've stayed away from the major purposes and that you're willing to, to really be specific about it. But I feel it's unnecessary to say it can't continue um, when it's there now. If we do nothing, it's worse than if you let us do what we want. But it wouldn't stop the subdivision or the number of lots. Like, like Bob said, we respect that you have a, a, an equation that tells you what they feel is the fair number. And there's room to put seven houses in here. This, pushing them against where they already are and spreading them out is in my opinion, by far the most mature way to, to, to develop this land. Most people will put a road in the middle and houses on either side. They all look the same because the frontage costs money. In this instance, we're wasting 500 feet of frontage because we want to keep the character of what's there. The, the barn is, is an environmental mistake. I don't know if it was permitted. No one really answered the question at the planning board, but it's there. And you have to look at a redevelopment different than development. It isn't fair to say these rules, as, as Bob said, we wouldn't ask for this. If it, if it wasn't a five-story barn already in this hole, we want to separate it, clean it up, and move and stretch it out. We're not, at, we're not going to bring any structures here. This is literally fixing. The, the foundation of this thing is ridiculous. It's a drive under. 
Um, it's intimidating. And I can't think of a better plan than to separate it. You have a 170-year-old house and a 170-year-old carriage house. How, what do you build in there that would, would fit the character? I mean, the, the luck of stumbling into this, the idea of separating it, the fact that it further meets what the zone wants, the fact that it's clearly an improvement over what's there, is different. Unnecessary hardship. Somebody wrecked this hundreds of years or, or many years before we came along, and it's been allowed to, it's been taxed and, and treated as if it's a legal structure, and now we want to fix it to 100% or to 90% because 90% is a better subdivision than doing it to 100% by far. It's a shame to put a house in that field in the front of the property <coughs> when the right place for it is already developed and it's been pre -developed. We're going to put growth where there is now a gravel pit. And I just need to know the difference between redevelopment. Something's already been done and we're saying we're going to make it better but not 100%. To us coming and saying, can we invade something? We wouldn't do that. It's not in my nature. Thank you, Mr. Brigham. Ms. Cass, do you defer? Do you want me to go to a butter come and come back? Yeah, I, I don't have any additional questions. Can I ask an additional question? In your standard between the abutters and their chances, <laughs> I, I, I have a quick question. Um, aren't you really saying here that, and by the way, I'm, I'm very sympathetic, I think, to your vision is, is an impressive one. But aren't you really saying that you're asking us to, you could have your open space, so to speak, out back where four and five are. And you're asking us to give you a variance for the setback so that you could have this open space in front where as you could, you could put house number four. You could put house number four. Can I sneak by yeah. what, what could you do? Put house number four here, and then tr move this up a, a, a bit. Maybe even move your, your, your driver over a little bit. That way, you're still you put the house here. You still have your nice view up front. You're not you would maintain the 250 foot setback, and by 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 doing that, I just wondering a lot about I mean, if you consider that. Okay. I think that that, that, is, that is an approach. Again, what, what, we, what we thought was a better, a better approach, and, and that's why we're here asking. And if we haven't made our case on why ours is better, then I, I understand that. That could become a house lot in front. It's, it definitely loses the stature of what that property is. I mean, you have to almost stand or, or look and see that right now, just it would be almost unchanged from the street. You would almost not know that this property had been developed. And there's already a, a leveled out, cleared, problem house site out there. And so we try to use logic and say, well, does it make, maybe it doesn't make sense to disassemble the barn. If we have to look at different roads and different drainage and different plot setups, maybe this plan still makes sense or maybe it doesn't. You know, we're looking at what's there and proposing something that we think is a lot better. but. Um, like Bob said, if, if, if people don't agree, I, I, I get it. It's just, I'm not saying that we could just scramble this anyway and I'd still do it. I, I'm going to make this one of the most beautiful subdivisions in Rollinsford. And that front area is stately, it's stunning. It's been that way for a long time and it just feels wrong when someone's already, what you're trying to protect is already done. If you could see the holes that we have to contend with over there, now we want to cover them with topsoil and create root systems and trees and whatnot. It really is the best way to develop this property. I, I Members of the public, oh, actually, a butter's first. Yeah. Um, but members of the public will also allow to address it. Any uh, butters wish to address uh, the board or ask a question of the applicant? I'll just say that yeah, if you could identify yourself for Gail Flynn. Thank you. I'm the one that lives directly across the street from this park and heads that view. Can you give me um, your address? 653 Silver Street. Thank um, you, Ms. Flynn. Go ahead. We've had this has been on the market for a long time. And like somebody else said, people were looking at it to make it into a wedding venue, which none of the neighbors wanted. 
you know, putting a road down the middle and having as many condos as they can fit just doesn't suit the property. I mean, my house is, was built in the late 1800s. This house was. It, there's a special section down there. Some newer houses on the beginning of the road, the dead end road, but uh, the ones toward the end are all older. Um, Mike was nice enough to contact all of the abutters and the neighbors and meet with us and go over all of his plans. Um, we like the open concept he's done. Um, he talked about tearing down the barn, but when he found out what a gem it was, you know, and he just seems to really want to keep that historical um, flavor to the, the property. One of the things that I was most happy about is the fact that Mike and his family have bought the main house and are living there. So this is going to be his neighborhood, too. He's also been a developer for a while, and we've looked into some of the other, and he does a beautiful job. So I don't know a lot about setbacks in the waterway, but if he says that he's going to do what needs to be done to keep those safe, I tend to trust him. I think he's done enough of this in the past. Um, and that meeting, I think pretty much everyone in the neighborhood, um, there may have been one or two people that couldn't make it, left that meeting feeling very happy about this plan. Um, so just to let you know the background <coughs> in that he's, he has made us all a part of what he wants to do. It wasn't somebody that just came in and said, I'm doing this, I don't care what the neighbors think. And so, um, again, I don't know about saving the waterway and that stuff. That's something people that know more about would have to make decisions on. But I think the plan he's come up with is great. The open concept that's going to be common land for all the people there, the neighbors can use it, walk down to the water, you know, way and enjoy it. And it just, I think Kathy's also in the neighborhood. I believe she believes the same, so I'll let her talk to her. She wants to. Yeah. Kathleen Ellis. Thank you, Ms. Lynn. Kathleen yeah. Ellis. 652 Silver Street. My two bedrooms upstairs view that awful monstrous thing on his property. And it has been many years and there's been many stuff coming, all the stuff coming in on trailers and whatever. And the land itself is beautiful. I mean, it was a farm when it first was built. And my house and the house next to me were um, the tenants that uh, worked on the farm. And then Mike Brown's house was the schoolhouse. And so it has a lot of history, and it's very pretty. And it's just, it needs to become beautiful again. I mean, it's, and we'll, we're very happy that we're not going to have a lot of traffic down there with a lot of homes or a lot of apartments or something like that because it's a dead end street and it just is a big improvement as to what these gentlemen want to do. And I understand that there's a lot that you guys have to consider, but... I have just one more comment if that's okay. Um, regarding the big barn, the lower part of that barn was built by the previous owner who with the Prasads and for a horse barn. They had horses on that property. When Dr. Bennett came in, and I don't know any of the definite facts, but through, you know, word of mouth, so to speak, he built onto that barn, and like they say, it's five stories. The top story, from what I understand, went above the level it was supposed to be. Um, Dr. Bennett often would do things that he wanted to do and then ask for permission afterwards. Um, so, you know, but it, it is, uh, Kathy's right in front of that line. You can't, I mean, it blocks every view that's down there. It just doesn't go with the, you know, the, the house and the beautiful carriage house that sits on that property. Um, and so if that could be replaced with some nice homes, I, I think it would be an improvement, as Mike says. I think he's looking to improve the property. And I just like his attitude and how he develops the properties. I think he's he's trustworthy in that sense. And the fact that he's living there makes it even more so because he's going to be looking at whatever he puts up. So. <laughs> Great. Other Great. Mr. 
Amendment? Um, when they live at 97A uh, Main Street in South Park, I was a former resident of one short street in Rollins, but I still hold a financial interest in that property and so on on the tax card as a uh, owner, as a co-owner of the property. Uh, my ex also requested that I come here this evening and see what's going on. I will compliment the developer on what they've done here. Um, pretty darn nice. nice. Nice little subdivision. You know, they, they did a good job. Plus also, by the way, I'm the former uh, planning board chair in town. So, uh, I really like what, I, what I'm seeing here. Um, on the barn, um, as Gail talked about, the originally, well, when I moved there in 97, there was no, nothing there. Um, people bought it, the house from the Dainties. The, uh, a horse barn went in, I think it was probably 30 by 60 or something like that. Uh, Dr. Bennett bought the property and then it grew. And uh, both during that time, I was on the planning board as an alternate with Mr. Putman as the uh, chair. Um, I know that both of us voiced, well, I voiced concerns about the ever-expanding uh, footprint of the building. Keep in mind that, though, at that time, the board of selectmen was lax. would be a a good word. Um, they really didn't look into things too hard. And I think it was kind of this sad period that, you know, some things got away with. Um, I never knew as a planning board member that this was within the 250 foot, back, uh, foot um, setback. Um, so, it, you know, I think, yeah, the, the, it was built, built illegally pretty much. The, the property was well cared for until uh, Dr. Bennett took, uh, took uh, over the uh, property. He did do a very nice stone wall in the front. Uh, he did put that in. Um, the rest of the property, you took care of, but yeah, that thing off the side, yeah, that, all, that was really a poor decision. Um, one of the concerns that I would raise, and I think this is more from a planner and having been on the board and all the stuff um, is the fact of encroaching into the buffer. Um, with, that, that's there for a reason. It's been there for a long time. As we've looked at developments, uh, I was heavily involved in the one with the subdivision uh, off of both by the dump. Um, we were really stringent as to, you know, where they were to put buildings, you know, the properties are well marked. If you notice, all the properties sit, at least on the river side of the road, pretty much on the road because, because of the 250 foot buffer. Um, from what I personally see is that one lot of prop house could be repositioned and made to conform to the regulation. Um, you lose, you'd lose one lot. That one lot is probably tough to, to build on to get something in. You know, do I believe that you, as a resident, uh, will put a house in the front and ruin that view shed? Nothing's. Okay, I'm, just, I'm just saying, I, my, let, let's put it this way, if it was, if I was a developer and I was going to lose one house lot and put, I was fight to put a house right in the front, you know, but I do that at, you know, I'd want to maintain my view and maintain my investment. So, um, but I, I think that you're, you would be creating a dangerous precedent on brand new variants to this to this uh, setback. Uh, I really can think of you know, situations where I know like within the last 20 years we haven't done anything. You're know, probably going back another 15 beyond me. The only place I can think of is potentially uh, withdrawn. But I don't think 
this anything within 250 there. I think I was on the board just, I think the 250 foot setback was adopted just before, just after I got on the board in the late 80s. And I think that Woods Run was already in place. Yeah. It may have been that the 250 was partly a response to how close and I thought it was probably short. Okay. All right, thank you. Anything else, Mr. Mack? No, that's it. Okay. Are there any other members of the public or abutters who wish to address the board or ask questions of the applicants? I'm going to give you all a chance to respond, but I want to see if Ms. Cass or any other members of the board have additional questions. I really don't. I want to let Bob talk, but I did just want to restate that when they talk about precedence, every piece of property is completely unique. In, in my 30 years in real estate, I've never had a peninsula before. And as Bob said, I'd love to see another property that 11 acres and, and almost six of it is encumbered by one, one setback. The, the lot equation says it can have seven houses. I don't think it's spite or greed to say that if I were to develop this, I would want to have the seven houses. It's very expensive. It's not a greed thing. So really, as Bob said, it comes down to, does it still make sense to me to do it somewhere else? And if so, there's only one other spot. And so I don't want anyone to think that if I can't put, sometimes you look at land and there's obvious, when you stand there forgetting all the paperwork, there's just obvious spots. And really have to see that if, you're, if this is a precedent, it would have to be another property where over half of it's encumbered by a setback that's already been pre-developed incorrectly and has major 14-foot deep craters. I mean, th there are reasons why I'm saying unnecessary hardship. Somebody, you're not allowed to put paint on that brick, but somebody already put paint on the brick. And, and it's a much better system than what we have in mind. There's a, when you go in there, there's a logical way that it feels like it should be. It's really hard to convey with paper. But when you wipe out this setback, it, it, even though it's already what you were protecting against has happened to a horrible degree, it, all it leaves is that front corner. And so that is what would happen is your typical, it, it, it will be more of your typical lollipop cul-de-sac standard subdivision. In, in fact, it could just be bigger lots where the water frontage gets divvied up into seven different families. That there's different ways to do it. This, I'll stand till the day. I, I appreciate people noticing my sincerity and my enthusiasm. I will stand with the same statement and, and, until I can't anymore that there's a right way of doing this. When you look at that area, this aerial shot doesn't do it justice. When you look at that barn, when you look at this area, it's a shame. And to, to put it for what the zone really wants, and to put protections in place, and to forever deed it so that it can never happen again, and these rules are attached to the deeds, is a huge improvement. And if someone says, I can make it a lot better, when there's a pre-existing development, it's not a new development, it's, it's a redevelopment. Somebody already did something. And so it really is a lesser evils. And I, I just don't see how someone comes in here and says, hey, can I go 175 feet off the San Andreas River? He did. We had to look at each piece unique in, into its own stance. This piece, if there ever was one, because of its history and because of the way it lays out, it is a logical one. I, don't, I can't imagine a better argument or even a similar argument from somebody else. I don't think you're disrespecting the setback. I think you're, you're taking something that's here, that's not contested that it shouldn't be here, and, and allowing it to get better. Not forcing it to 100%, but looking at the fact that sometimes there's a gray world where it's bad and we can make it better. I'm not, it's not good and we can make it... We're not going that direction. We're, we're going in a direction that's clearly taking something and putting it the way it's meant to be. I don't feel that there's a greed factor. I, I, I really feel that this is the way that this should lay out, that the, the things that are supposed to be respected are. 
I mean, I want to leave it to Bob, but as when he mentioned that, that more than half of this lot is in that setback, and the other half is stunning, uh, historical, and, and has so much history, it's a shame. But at the end of the day, uh, if someone wants to look at this as just, just merely a setback waiver, without looking at the unnecessary hardship, the damage is done already. Are we really pushing something that has no benefit? It doesn't benefit the neighbors. It doesn't benefit the neighborhood. It doesn't benefit the viewscape. And it doesn't benefit the river. There's a flat, hollow hole that can remain or be filled in with sod and trees and bushes and plants and regulated and watched. But it's there. I mean, that, I guess one of my... I really feel it's different because somebody did it and permitted it or, or didn't or was paying taxes on it. It's, it's been done and it's a shame. And I want to fix it. And there's no need to go in there and fill all these holes and regrade if you can't put a house there. You're not going to just go and spend that money to remove that barn and fill it in and then try to incorporate it back to the way it should have been. It's just... Um, it's a, it's a really very logical, when you stand there, you can see the distance and the buffer and, and all the important things are not being affected. Literally, that house is being shown on a scrubbed out hole that we would bring up and, and, and make a good buffer and be a good neighbor to the river. I don't know if you had it. I, 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 really, I really don't have much to, to add, but put it together, I, I think Mike and I agreed that, that uh, again, we've, we've been doing this a long time. We're pretty pleased with how it laid out. Uh, we spent a lot of time on the property uh, finding, finding uh, good spots, bad spots. What makes the most sense for the property as opposed to drawing on paper and then just forcing the property to comply? One, one thing that kind of stuck up on us was, was this river frontage over here that leaves our frontage that creates a setback on us. I, I, that was a late entry to our plans. I'm not sure we, uh, again, kind of fell in love with the building sites over here before. Um, we saw where that, that, that doesn't turn out to be exactly the way it is on the, on the, uh, on the town maps. Uh, so it, it, it pulled over quite a bit. But again, I think, I think uh, from our standpoint, that those were, were um, very good building sites, and, and I mean, really, when I when I read read five A one, no fair and substantial relationship exists between the general purpose of the ordinance and the specific application of provisions of the property. Again, if if as I have heard that analogy before, but if the bricks have already been painted, uh, enforcing it for the sheer sheer. Uh, uh, need to enforce it, I, I think that's what that is, is all about, is, is the damage is already been done for the purpose that it's put, that put in place. The, the, the horse is already out of, out of the barn. Is that a better one? It, it breaks the pain of that. I'm sorry, so yeah. But, but that, I... It, it's I, a that, shame what happened there. There's no way around it. And, and this conversation is to try to fix something. And in, in other towns, they have looked at redevelopment, not as grandfathered, not as, as okay to, to pollute rivers, but certainly is something that if we can make it better, we're doing our job. We don't have to necessarily be perfect. Sometimes that actually could have a, a worse effect. And I know it seems arbitrary just throw the house across the street, and maybe that's you know the road that ends up happening, but it's a shame. It, it's, I'd love to walk it with you guys or something. It's, it's a shame. So we're good. Before I close the hearing, any questions? Yes, I've got one. And as well, you know, this is coming from the, uh, the storm, storm water regulations, and it says here, runoff from, from impervious services shall be treated to, to achieve 80% removal of total suspended solids and at least 50% removal of both the total the nitrogen and total phosphorus using appropriate treatment measures. It's specified in the New, New Hampshire stormwater man will your development be yes. 
So, therefore, I have to agree. Okay, thank you. Okay. Mr. Hensman? I have one question. Was any consideration, Mr. Brigham, given to possibly uh, changing the lot four portion to maybe the open space portion? I know that you, you know, the visual. I'm, I'm familiar with this property, and, and it is lovely. Um, but as Mr. Hinsman pointed out, you know, if if you situated the house closer to the cul-de-sac, you would retain that that view and. Um, the encroachment onto the 250-foot uh, setback would be less egregious. Was any consideration given yeah. to that? Bob and I went through so many scenarios. There's a lot of things to consider. How much open space you're supposed to have, drainage. I mean, he'll answer some of the other questions. When you stand out there and look at it, it will feel different than it does on paper. It, the, barn, the barn and the barn development has completely trashed and dominated one whole slice of the subdivision and the rest of it is just virgin beautiful untouched to keep the development where it happened already and not suck it in in front of the victorian you won't see the victorian what he considered almost spiteful to put it there and what all the abutters have said to you is believe it or not their hardship is is, is worse than not granting this they Look at this, and, and instead of being in someone's fence backyard with dogs and kids and swing sets, I'm proposing picnic tables and, and walking trails and, and something. There's going to be a, a walking trail between the carriage house and the Victorian, which is already delineated, so that everyone in this neighborhood of mine and around it have the right to come down. You have a little paddle boat and some, you know, it, it to take that to take the whole side of this property and just bomb, like a bomb hit it. And then to say, well, I'm not allowed to go over there, so now I'm going to go across the street and do it again. It's a shame. I, all I can say is, yes, a lot of thought went into it, and it may end up being how this ends up happening, or, or maybe, it, it, I don't know, but it's a shame when you look out there and you see that somebody developed a third of this property and if we can keep the development there, it's so much better. I mean, that, that house is going to block the entire property. You can see it all the way from, from Route 4 now. It's, it's, it's meant to have um, that grandeur. It, it's an estate property. I feel like I'm being a, a, a warden of it. And I feel like this is the most mature way, is keep the development where it already happened. And that's why I keep making the distinction that that somebody did this, and that we're only talking, I know it's, it's 50 feet, you know, or, or, or 75 feet for just one small box that's already, it's being moved. It, it was in the setback, and we're just proposing to, to move it. But that's what I'm asking. Yes, so, you could go across. You know, could, and, and I am respectful of your vision, and, and I do appreciate that, because, it, you know, there has been a lot of thought that's gone into this, and, you know, dissecting the car barn and moving it, but possibly not moving it on to what's designated as lot four. You know, possibly changing lot four to the open space and the open space into lot four. Again, it's just, it's a little, it, it's not as egregious into that, that wetland setback. It, it's, it's one of the things we looked at, and it's a possibility. It might mean reworking the road and drainage, and it certainly will change you could go to this property tomorrow, I mean, after it's developed, and, and n never know that it was developed under this scenario. It's taking the land that was wrecked and fixing it and putting the houses there. Um, or the alternative is, is decreasing it by one lot. I understand that, you know, by the regulations and the, and the, the, and the footprints, then, the, the, right, you know. That's the biggest problem, is it's just right. that the, the, the equation started early in. How many... What are the town? No, don't ask for a variance for an extra unit. Mm -hmm. Don't ask for a variance for some crazy business. All I'm saying is, can I take something that's in a setback and slide it over so it's still in the setback while filling in the grading, replanting new vegetation, making what any, if you lined 100 engineers up and asked them, they would all say, you're, you're taking what you have, because you can't just pretend like it's virgin soil, and mm -hmm. making it the best you possibly can. Um, and, and that's really what all of us thought we were going to do. But, 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 but. I, I was just
just going to say that, that uh, if, you, if you go to page two, after, after the, the barn picture, so, uh, the, first, the first picture after the barn. Is it on the first handout, this handout? Yeah, uh, one, one more. This, this guy here is, is at the stone wall up front mm -hmm. as the driver come in. And you can, you can see that we catch the, the corner of the existing barn. So that's, that's here looking in. And you just, you just get a glimpse of, of this here. So that was the idea on, on, on the placement of, of these. I mean, I, I, I can't commit from life, but, but certainly um, this, this lot can exist the way it is and just, just pull, 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 it, pull it out. What we have it right now is sitting. There's a 14-foot drop. It's hard to see right there, but where he's drawing, there's all these elevation lines tight. So there's a 14-foot drop so that he can drive under. Mm -hmm. What I've done is set the house half in the hole and half not. So from the road, you're going to see the front of the house. From the back, the basement is filling in the hole, and then we'll come and we'll fill in everything else around it. That's what I meant when I said a walkout. Because we're into a slope, we end up with a drive under garage or a walkout basement. So that house was specifically set so that the front of it seems the same elevation as the road, and the back of it will will, will help us fill in this, this monumental hole. There's a, there's a 14 feet deep, I think, is not overestimating how deep it is right there. Um, could you pull it into the into the street with a short little driveway? Yes. Could the one that we're asking to be at 175 be at, a, at 200? Yes. If, if we really just broke this down to one house, 50 feet further, <coughs> I could maintain the integrity of, of what I think this property deserves. If we can't, it's, it's your rule book, and I respectfully fully understand. So it is, is that appropriate or inappropriate in this, this form to discuss alternatives? Um, I, let me make, there are two answers to that. Yes, <laughs> no. um, yes, it's your time, and you're welcome to make any um, arguments to the board that you want. Um, personally, I'm inclined to the view that the Zoning Board of Adjustment is not a good um, we're not well suited to that, frankly. Um, we're we're fairly new to the to the um, uh, complexity of the ordinance. Uh, even though I was on the planning board for 20 years, I've forgotten a lot of what I used to know. Um, and um, both, you know, with all respect to, to Dr. Bennett, God rest his soul, if he's passed he's, on already, he's still around. He's, he's still, still around. around. Okay. With him. all appropriate respect to him. Um, my worry is that a lot of well-meaning people bent the rules um, um, because of the complexity. Um, Mr. Dr. Bennett was both a fast talker and a quick to sue, and um, people backed off when he threatened them. Um, uh, and, and so I worry that um, we are not bored to kind of wheel and deal on whether it's 50 feet or this many feet or what conditions to put on parcel four and so forth. Um, and it's it's one of the things that we just struggle with as a as a, with our with, with enforcing our ordinance is that the select board is overburdened, planning board is overburdened, uh, and you know with, with their, with their volunteers and we're volunteers. The select board is volunteers. So this is um, so make, make whatever argument you want to, and we'll certainly consider it uh, for for however the individual board members can make it. I just. Or keep it. it's, a, it's a unique piece of land, and that's why you have a ZBA. If, if, the, if the rules were, read the rule book, there wouldn't be a ZBA. But there's a ZBA because not everything is the same. That sometimes you might run into a situation where someone's trying to redevelop a five-story barn and a hole and a setback, and you have to use some judgment to say, in a normal world, would I give this if it were not the situation? No. But... It isn't black and white. Real estate never is. This is a very unique piece of property. The abutters that have been here for decades like the way it lays out. They've expressed a displeasure in, in other ways, and it's done already. It, it, most people aren't coming to you saying, can I take a problem and make it less? And that's a nice request because it's here already. The other question is, can I 
just do nothing, and, and here it is. And it's a shame, because when someone says, can I make something better, even, even in the commercial construction world, if you're remodeling a, a, a property, it's different than if you're building a new one. They say, no, you can't have sprinklers in this room because the, the cement's too thick, or because there's some other reason why something happened before you came along. Sometimes you have to make the best of what you have, and, and it's not, doesn't seem fair or right to just say, hey, the rule is this, there's a good reason for the rule, I'm not going to bend on it, if I do I feel that I've somehow opened up floodgates. The planning, the, the ZBA is specifically here, because every property is unique, and every situation is unique. That right there, that whole five story, big drive under, you know, it's got four inch concrete floors, needs to be jackhammered out of the ground, and the, the level from where you see those trees to the back of that car was a nice slope, and it was supposed to be. It wasn't supposed to be a stone wall with drainage pipes. I don't know how Dr. Bennett got the permission, but now it's permitted. And if the ZBA has an opportunity to make something better, they, I, I just don't want it to be so hung up on the rule that's being bent without the story that, that is specific to this. That's it. So my, my question was, would you consider altering your request? Hearing your concerns have led me to think that it is very serious, even though I'm making it better, and I felt like that was enough. There's a, there's a room in there to make it even better. Instead of saying, can we get 175 foot setback for two lots, um, that we could say, could we just change it to a 200 foot setback for one lot, it's not wheeling and dealing as much as addressing concerns as soon as they came out. To take, to take another house and push it forward, it won't be the, the drive under, it's not the ideal situation, but it can be done, and, and maybe in the long run it's the right thing to do. If I could say that we could keep one of the lots at 200 feet, I'd push everything as far forward and close to the road as possibly able, and be able to revegetate these areas and to regrade them the way they were supposed to be. Um, if it just becomes open space, I guess that's the open. I mean that that it. You, please compare what I'm showing you to what's there, and not this ideal situation that this thing had already been protected. Because it really is a shame. I can make this much better. I really can make it a lot better than it is. Mr. Brigham, thank you very much. Yes, Members of the public and abutters, thank you all very much. Um, I appreciate y your care and your energy uh, that you put into uh, your presentation tonight. Um, it's all been very thoughtful, and I appreciate the way you've engaged with, with all of us. Um, uh, my least favorite part of being a member of the ZBA is that we must deliberate in public. Uh, and so we are going to close the hearing, uh, and we are now going to deliberate live like we are some sort of reality TV show. <laughs> um, and we will struggle with it. So, um, just, I'm open to either having a motion on the floor or just general conversation and then followed by a motion once we get a sense of where the, where the consensus of the board lies. I'm happy to comment first, so I'll comment okay. first. So, and I think the one benefit of an open deliberation, the applicants gets to hear about it. Um, one thing I, I, I wrote to uh, the chairman while we were living here, this is the idea of a sidewalk. Um, when I initially, I came into this thinking I was going to vote in favor of it, and now I'm, I'm pretty much uh, decided I'm going to vote against it because of the um, the importance of the setbacks, um, and that I think the applicant could make, although he's got a fantastic vision, uh, and I think it's beautiful, I also think that 250 feet setback is extraordinarily important uh, for all things that Paul said, and just uh, my own personal concerns, and that um, you know some adjustments could be made that may not be quite what the, what the applicant uh, wanted, um, but still could be a beautiful project. So a part of me wonders a lot whether he might want to withdraw the request and come back with a modified request to let us... But, but I, I think that what I'm saying is 
I don't think that we are equipped. We've already been here an hour and 45 minutes, and, and, and I, I, I don't mind that, but I don't think we are equipped to handle a modified application, uh, 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 you know, midstream. Uh, I have to say to judges, uh, when I ask, I say I'm 90% I'm, I'm preparation and 10% inspiration, meaning uh, to the extent that I'm successful at all, um, it's that I need time to prepare. I'm not fantastic on my feet. So um, I think, you know, the applicant's vision for this property is tremendous, um, but I'm hung up on the, on, on the amount of the... Um, the encroachment on, on the, uh, the what he's asking for, and especially lot four, where I see that an adjustment could be made. So I, I'm openly leaning against it uh, right now. If I think, in fact, I'll, I'll say, unless the board convinced me otherwise, I, I would be voting in opposition to the request. Mr. Kessel, Ms. Kess? Mr. Hensman has, has summed up my feelings as well. I, I commend Mr. Brigham for his vision and you know what he intends for the lot but I I just I I can't support it just because of how far into that 250 foot setback he is encroaching um, so I, I tend to agree that I would uh, you know I would be willing to adjourn and see um, if they're if the applicant is willing to adjust but I, I too would be a denial of this application as it's presented to us. Yes, I also agree. Um, I can see that that the applicant is really trying hard to to improve this for property. And he's creating special conditions on the property which will protect the river. But I don't think it's been Told to, told to us in the, uh, uh, you know, enough detail. And so at this time, I'm leaning towards the, uh, you know, denying the variance also because the facts have not convinced me, or or the testimony hasn't convinced me that that the river will will, will not be you know be affected from from this development. deliberations do you want to stay with your application would you like to come back for you know adjourn, not, let's say we would not adjourn we would recess this hearing um, and then come back to consider a, a, a revision to the plan in the application so I think that we would obviously we see the flavor and withdraw I don't know that we come back I mean to be honest with you none of you have left any gray when you look at that and say I don't see how taking a small piece of that and erasing the rest of it, you've proven the benefit to the river. I don't see how I could convince you. I'm trying to show you something that's existing versus something that's much, much smaller and much better. And if you don't see the benefit to that, what would be the reason to come back? I mean, I, I honestly am, am surprised, but I, I can also see um, the writing on the wall. There's no need to vote, though. Um, no, we're, um, we owe it to you to, 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 to vote and give you a written decision, and we're we're happy to do our job, so, Mr. Could we just withdraw with the concept of who knows, maybe? Um, um, as far as I know, you may. I don't, I don't have a problem if you want to withdraw. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, uh, if it would be helpful to you as you consider it. Um, uh, so, as I indicated to you, I, I think that your best arguments were on... Um, your best arguments were on not contrary to the public interest because you had damaged land and you're trying to, to improve it, you know, and so the, on the public interest piece, you had a strong argument. Um, spirit of the ordinance, I want to come back to because I really struggle with that one as well as hardship. Um, the substantial justice element is, um, again, you've made a strong argument for why 
your neighbors um, are in in, a, in support of the proposal uh, and why it's it, in effect undoing an injustice that Dr. Bennett did to the to the to the land to this unique parcel. Um, and you've done made an excellent presentation in terms of surrounding popular uh, property values. Um, I think it's the question of fair and substantial relationship between the general public purposes of that setback and the specific harm or the specific application to this parcel. And in that regard, I think that you're right, Mr. Brigham, we must, we must look at this parcel. Um, in, but in doing that, we also um, uh, have to be aware that the grounds for asking for the setback is somebody else basically committed intentional harm on the, on the parcel, so therefore you must give us the variance. And I do worry that, that a, a lot of people uh, come in and point to something that's on the property that somebody else did. I worry about creating an incentive. Um, Dr. Bennett, again, he has a lot of wonderful qualities, um, but I think he took an existing footprint and went up uh, and maxed it out. And, um, and oddly enough, the 250-foot setback does a great job saying you can't have buildings. It does a lousy job protecting the actual land itself because you've got all the cars and the, and the gouging out. The whole out. corner of the structure is in it as well. Yeah. But what I worry about is that, um, that, that the actions of a previous landowner are not a hardship. Um, they are they're a constraint, they are um, an impact um, that you and, sadly, your neighbors are all having to deal with. Um, but I, I just worry that um, it's asking us to do an awful lot. Um, I hear a lot of support from the board, and um, I think in the same spirit, if you can trust us that um, we, we really appreciate how much energy you've put into this and how sincere you are. Um, if, if you want to you know, withdraw and come back, we'll give you another hearing. We're, we're, um, we may not be the smartest ZBA on the face of the planet, but we are willing to do our job, and we do need to do it as well as we humanly can. So um, we're happy to give you another listen. And um, Are you like, insinuating in some way that if it were smaller and just one home that there'd be, I mean, I, I don't, I see your concerns as being black and white and, and nothing, so I don't know what I could come back and ac actually expect you guys to, to do. I'm looking for some direction instead of a no, uh, if it were like this. You know, I've had other boards say if they were just a little denser or a little closer, but if it's a no, it's a no. It, this, this is now going to knock us off of obviously the, the, the next week planning board meeting, so if you guys don't want to come to that. And, um, I have to be very careful not to make promises because we have to have No, and I understand that, but I, I think if but, I listen to what you say, you've made your answer clear. I don't know how. It's a lot easier to, to look at a 50-foot a variance on one parcel than to look at two 75-foot variances off of that, particularly given the importance of that, uh, the riverine setback. That is, um, uh, there, there is a, an element of our community, and I don't mean this in a in any way to be a negative statement, but there's an element of our community that views that riverine setback as sacred. Um, and, and in terms of the environmental values that are represented by that setback, um, again, it's a lot easier for us to look at a, something that's more like a de minimis variance than something that's a third of the way into that setback. Um, so Would you all be available to meet again soon? I mean, I'm, I'm happy. We kind of verbally threw out there, and I guess that's not appropriate, but the, the fact is that based on what we're hearing from you, we would love the, the, the idea of literally just asking, can we invade that by only 50 feet on only one lot on a structure that's already in it, greatly reducing the amount of structure that's in it now, specifically to keep and maintain a, a, a certain uh, uh, respect for the land. And, and um, I know it's an inconvenience. You guys came here just for us. And we're asking the question, and we already have our thoughts, but if it has to be done in a formal manner where everyone has to come back, that would be the only other question I could possibly ask. I think I could, I think I could still make it beautiful 
with a 50 foot setback on one lot and if that's something that there's a possibility for we'd love to try it if it's just an insult because you've all stated your facts then i don't want to waste everyone's time what, what are the uh, noticing procedures as far as if we recess this yeah. uh, meeting i don't think we need to do a full could we make it i mean obviously it would we i would love to agree to a date mm -hmm. right now we would mm -hmm. have to agree to a date right now so we can pull out our calendar. I would like that. I mean, I, I, I don't want to push anything. I don't want to be where I'm not wanted. I really feel that this is a, a strong enough uh, justice that it's worth it's worth cons talking about further. Okay. So, Sarah, you're better at this than I am. Do you want to start throwing out some dates? Okay. So, um, how's the Thursdays for everybody? How's what? Thursdays. Thursdays in general are good? Thursdays are good for me until the start of the new semester. Okay. I work here till seven. That's a super long okay. yeah. Got it. Yeah. Um, That's already a So the only Tuesday I have available in July is the twenty third, because I have planning the ninth. Best I've seen if I have plans and notes so the twenty third. Are the board members open to a Wednesday, or is a Tuesday the only day that works? I'm open to a Wednesday. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can do Wednesday. Paul. Yeah, Wednesday would be good. Uh, 24th would be good. I'm available the 17th or the 24th. Not the 24th. The 24th of the room is already booked. Okay. So the 17th? That works for me. I know I don't have any big trials that day, so... Uh, How about you, Paul? I think you did. Yes. That's the so that would be okay. in two weeks. Is that agreeable to you? Okay. So we will um, recess this um, proceeding until um, July 17th at 6 p.m. 6 p.m. <laughs> Can we have to 6? 6.15ish. Would 6.30 be easier, Charlie? No, I can make 6 o'clock work. Um, 6 is not amazing. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, well, thank you, and thank thank you all who have attended this evening. Uh, we appreciate your, your effort. Uh, so we are in recess until 6 6.15 p.m. Um, 6.15? Let's do 6.15. And um, uh, we will try to be prompt, and um, we will uh, reconvene the hearing at that time. On the 17th, 17th July, July 17th. Okay. Do I need to make a motion to um, So just so that we're clear, the current application is being withdrawn um, and will be resubmitted um, with new, new documents. I think we'll do it under the same docket uh, as 1904. Um, as basically an amended um, petition so that you don't have to completely rewrite it. Um, all right. Thank you. Thank you all very much.